The dubs will greatly miss the screen setting, defense, and all-around versatility of three crucial role players who they lost in free agency, as those qualities provided by Gary Payton II, Otto Porter Jr., and Nemanja Bialica were no joke. 2022-23's version of Golden State will have to build back up from ground zero, but rising stars going through their second, third, or fourth seasons in Warrior Threads, plus underrated free agent signings in solid stretch power forward Jermichael Green, and a player who started in every game he played for the 2021 champions Dante DiVincenzo, has the supporting cast in solid shape. Mac McClung's Exhibit 9 contract gives him a shot at cracking the 15-man roster in the preseason, and if the kid gets the shot he deserves, the reigning champions bench mob becomes that much more intimidating. What should you expect the next campaign to look like? And how do all these new pieces mesh around the big three of Step, Dre, and Clay? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 10% of you watching right now are subscribed. So press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. Now into the content. Summer League standout and newest warrior Mac McClung is coming off a season in the NBA G League where he averaged 21.4 points, 6.6 rebounds, 7.6 assists, and 1.4 steals per game for the South Bay Lakers. Proving the Lakers could have definitely used his services at the pro level down the 405 freeway over in LA, McClung made an elite 47% of his shots from the fields, he made 38% of his 5 threes attempted on average each game, and also made a stellar 88.5% of his free throws. Of course, that was just playing minor league basketball, and you're probably wondering how McClung's performed during the very limited opportunity he's received at the highest level. In late December of 2021, Mack was signed to the Chicago Bulls on a 10-day contract and made his NBA debut against the Atlanta Hawks only playing three minutes in garbage time. A welcome to the league moment saw McClung turn the ball over with one mid-air behind the back flashy pass. Only other significant moment came on this possession where Mack gets by Wessa Wundu, confuses Cameron Oliver on a drive to the basket with a hezzy, and then calmly knocks down a foul line jumper. But sadly, right after that game in Chi-Town, it was back to South Bay, where McClung would stay for the next three plus months until signing a near end of the season two-way contract with the Lakers and playing his first NBA road game in the Mile High City against the Denver Nuggets. This game saw McClung play 22 minutes and post a Laker third best plus minus as LA outscored their opponents by 9 points when Mack raced the court. Mack committed two turnovers to be fair, but his six points, including a three-pointer to go along with three rebounds, one assist, one steal, and a block, provided solid value in an eventual overtime 146-141 win for the Lake Show. His extra playmaking didn't fully show up in the stats. For example, after being doubled, this hockey assist to Stanley Johnson gets the defense scrambling for a Wayne Ellington corner triple. On the other end, as the big man in this pick and roll set, Stanley Johnson's the one who's supposed to be hedging and recovering, but here, Mack does his job, forcing the speedy Facundo Campazzo to give it up, and bursting back onto future warrior Jermichael Green for the steal, niftily saving the ball from going out of bounds, simultaneously starting a fast break, ending in a lob jam from Malik Monk. It was that defense which was most shockingly impressive in Mack's Laker debut, as here he chases down and swats Campazzo, showing off his stick to and verticality. This play sees him make it tough on DeMarcus Cousins by getting a deflection on an outlet pass. Next, he clamps up Marcus Howard in an iso and swats him but gets called for a foul. That could have easily doubled McClung's block total. It looked like all ball. In that game against Denver, while it had zero implications down the stretch of the season, Mack fueled the Lakers to a late game comeback as LA was down 9 points with under a minute remaining. This clutch and one on a 3-pointer cut Denver's lead to 5, and as he would go on to prove in the Summer League a few months later for Golden State, the follow-through and balance on his jump shot is fundamentally sound. But putting the icing on the cake was this reverse throwdown in the dying seconds, dunking prowess in which the legend of Gate City High School is known for. McClung was named G League Rookie of the Year, but still has yet to get a legitimate chance in the NBA. Las Vegas for the Summer League dubs was the next step for Mac, as I briefly just mentioned, and over five games in Vegas, he put up 13.4 points, 
4.8 assists, and a steal per game on a shooting split of 46-50-81. He'll have to fight his way onto the roster by performing in the preseason, but personally, I think it's a good idea for the Dubs to give themselves some extra shot creation next to Jordan Poole and DiVincenzo off the pine by giving McClung a guaranteed deal. Moving on to Jonathan Kaminga, who's still just 19 years of age, yet already has experience playing significant minutes in the conference finals. He also got playing time in the finals, but Kaminga's biggest playoff contributions came against Memphis and Dallas one and two rounds earlier. Those two playoff rounds saw Jonathan score at least 17 points on at least 43.8% shooting from the field three different times. As an end of the bench player, that production's pretty impressive. But Kaminga was far from an end of the bench player during the regular season. He legitimately worked his way into the rotation at one point, playing as many as 25.6 minutes per night over 10 appearances in February. A month earlier, in a game against the at-the-time number one seeded Chicago Bulls this past January, Kaminga scored a career second best up to that point, 25 points. We'll get to his transition dominance, but in terms of the half court, right after he catches a pass, Jonathan's extremely elusive and decisive, which makes him tough to guard considering his athleticism. This possession sees the Warriors execute a zipper pin down action as Damian Lee sets the down screen to free up Kaminga, and instead of Curry or another guard going to screen for the player in the corner, Steph smartly lays a flat screen on DeMar DeRozan, allowing Kaminga to take off. It's hard to notice, but this slight jab step directly after receiving the kickout from Bielitsa gets Ayo Dosumu leaning, and watch the three under control dribbles to get right past his fellow rookie and explode to the hoop. Along with those bunnies, another element in Kaminga's bag that's scary for his size is his playmaking. Here, he pushes it up in transition with his long strides and locates Curry right in his spot. While he only averaged 0.9 assists per game as a rook, this over-the-shoulder dime from the post after drawing three defenders, along with this mid-air drop-off after baiting the defense with a lay-in, prove to you that Kaminga's playmaking upside is off the charts. Speaking of upside, Kaminga's anticipation allows him to be a safety in the passing lanes, and his wingspan and foot speed allows him to be a rim protector on the back end. This game you're watching in Chi-Town saw the 19-year-old not only post a career second best in points, but he set a career high in blocks during this showing, with three of them, while also racking up a steal. To be fair, throughout the year and into the postseason, we saw Kaminga struggle to get a handle on opponents' offensive motion, and at times get exposed defensively, but nights like these prove to you that's an improving element. Most intimidating from an opponent's perspective though, when envisioning how good John can get, is the handle, three-point efficiency, and general shot-creating ability, which is very rare for a player with his stature. Kaminga made 34% of his three-pointers on the season overall, a decent percentage, but more notably, according to his shot chart, with 15 to 7 seconds remaining in a possession, he averaged 1.23 point attempts per game and made a stellar 40% of those middle of the shot clock deep range bombs. Mix that in with John's polished teardrop and natural feel for how to create space from the defense in and around the restricted area, and the Warriors have a complete three level score in the making. Who has the most potential of any young player on the Warriors? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top five commenters with the most shout outs by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winner is Cold Hands, who says, I think Curry gets the most disrespect. No matter what he's done or what he accomplishes, nothing is enough for the general media and the casual fans. Curry's great and everyone is taking him for granted. He's a leader and the culture starts with him. People don't seem to realize this. Great take right there. You tell the story and Community Speaks, so leave your take.